Yeah. 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 Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome. Uh, thank you for coming. There's copies of the agenda up here, if you uh, don't have one. Um, the first item on the agenda are minutes of uh, the May 7th meeting. Mr. Secretary. Mr. Chairman, I move the minutes of May 7th as amended. Second. Discussion. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? I abstain. I wasn't here, so I think. Okay. Approval not required is the next item on the agenda. Are there any, Mr. Curry? Okay. At this time, I'm going to do something unusual. I'm going to declare a uh, short recess. Um, we are going to take the uh, second decision out of order because we feel it's going to be uh, much shorter than the, than the first item on the agenda. And we are waiting for Mr. McGrath, who is returning with uh, a corrected plan for the AGM Trust. So at this time, feel free to speak amongst yourselves and so forth, and we'll be in recess for about five minutes.
Imagine people when left early. Yeah. They were interviewing people that left early. Yeah. Just, you know, uh, one guy said uh, he left early, was leaving, and he saw a guy with a bunch of kids, and the kids were screaming at their father. <laughs> well, look, Dad, look what you I don't know that keep Yeah, because he's way down. Because she's got, yeah. he's got a, he, we've got a plane in front of us this night. To try typing on yeah. uh, a Danish one. My, uh, <laughs> yeah. I never realized that. Yeah, it never occurred to me that languages would have different, different languages. Have different Two more minutes. Keyboard layouts. I don't know if she have stickers. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
That's the last time I'm a nice guy. No mercy next time. So we don't need to cut the AGM. Okay. What's that? Oh, sorry, yeah, we do. Yeah, we do, but it needs to be revised. Yeah, it needs to be revised. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to reconvene uh, tonight's planning board uh, for May 14th. Uh, at this time, I will entertain a motion to take uh, the applicant AGAM trust out of order. May I make the motion, Mr. Chairman? Yes, you may. And I will second it. I move the planning board motion. No, 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 Rich. I'm Security moving to take it out of oh, order. I make it for the and I second it. Okay. Any discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Stay. Now, the motion uh, for AGM Trust Definitive Plan and Special Permit to subdivide 10.29 acres into five lots and one open space parcel located Hatsville Road. We are being uh, provided a uh, an updated plan from Mr. McGrath. Did, uh, does everybody have one? Yeah. Or did we only get one copy? Did everybody get one? No, we got three. We did three. Oh, okay. All right, we got three. Okay. Um, yes, Rich, would you please read the decision? I will make the motion. All right, make the motion. Motion that the planning board vote to approve the application. I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. Yes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. Richard is not eligible to vote on this decision. I'm lost. Nope. You missed the hearing last week. Yeah. Okay. Good catch. Thank you very much. He can read all he wants, but he can't vote. Yeah. All right. I, I, we'll, we'll have somebody else read. Don't make them. Up. We'll have someone else read it. There you go. That's right. You were uh, you were in, okay. incapacitated last week. So, uh, so well, some, let's see. Uh, Jim, will you read it? Yes, I will. The uh, the motion. May 9th, two thousand thirteen. Motion that the planning board vote to approve the applicant of A G A. M Trust under Article XX 525 planned residential development of the zoning bylaw under Article 5, Chapter 305, subdivision regulations of the Town of Falmouth for a plan entitled Definitive Subdivision Plan prepared by AGAM Trust, drawn by Holmes and McGrath, dated March 4, 2013. Revised, what's the date on the revision? May 13th. May 13th, 2013. 2013, scale one inch equals 50 with the followings, findings, waivers, and conditions. Findings. The applicant proposes to subdivide 10.85 acres into five lots as a planned residential development pursuant to a special permit under section 25 of the zoning bylaw Utilizing frontage along Hatchville Road, the applicant has submitted a preliminary plan of land showing five lots together with the subdivision road, meeting the requirements of the zoning bylaw and the board's rules and regulations. However, the planning board has approved similar applications utilizing existing street frontage instead of the creation of a subdivision road for the planned resi residential developments and sees this as a preferred alternative in the instance Hatchville Road is a town accepted way with sufficient width, suitable grades, and adequate construction for the Vision 5 subdivision, the five lot subdivision. However, due to the speed of traffic on Hatchville Road, the board sees the reduction in the number of curb cuts necessary, together with the condition that the vehicles entering Hatchville Road 
from the vote subdivision do so in a forward manner without necessarily the necess necessity of backing into the public way. This is, this is consistent with Article 5 of the Board's rules and regulations together with the assessed and circulation requirements found in the zoning bylaw, Article 23, performance requirements. The plan conforms to the minimum lot dimensions and use requirements stated in Section 240-124-127, the zoning bylaw. Lots for building purposes are grouped in a cluster of approximately three to five lots. Within each cluster, the lots are contiguous. Land set aside for open space shall be permanently conveyed to the homeowners association and shall be used for passive open space purposes only. The application contained no provisions for access trails to Crooked Pond or any active recreation facilities upon the space. Accordingly, none are approved here. The plans show an easement for utilities in the open space from Shady Lane. Any utilities utilizing this easement through the open space will need to be placed underground, including power, telephone, and any cable utilities. Above ground poles will be conditioned as part of this decision. Does that, should that say no above ground poles? No. no? Okay, sorry. As there is no way proposed, waivers from the board's rules and regulations are not necessary. Conditions. Lot 1 and 2 shall have a shared curb cut into Hatchville Road. Lots 3, 4, and 5 shall have curb cuts designed to allow a typical motor vehicle to leave the lot in a forward direction without the necessity of backing into Hatchville Road. Prior to definition, def definitive planned endorsement, curb cut details for lots 1 and 2 and lots three, four, and five will be presented to the town engineer for review as part of the Department of Public Works street opening permit for approval consistent with this decision. Documents creating the homeowners association that will have control and custody over the open space shall be forwarded to the planning board. The use of open space shall be restricted to passive recreation only and shall be left in a natural state. No active uh, recreation or agricultural activities are allowed absent a modification of the special permit definitive plan decision. Any and all utilities utilizing the easement in the open space shall be buried underground. Above ground poles in the open space are expressly prohibited. Subject to the above, the planning board finds that the application meets the minimum requirement and conditions found in Article 25. Planned, res planned residential development of the zoning bylaw. The integrity of the wildlife habitat areas shall be enhanced with the development of this property as a planned residential development over, over the standard grid development. Scenic vistas will be highlighted and preserved, whereas the overall design of the residence takes into consideration the existing topography. The proposed development is consistent with the comprehensive plan's objectives. The plan is designed to, pr to produce a desirable character complementing the site's natural features. In addition to Article 42, yeah, there's the uh, special permits of the planning board finds that the site is adequate in terms of size and suitable for the proposed use. Due to the size and location of the property the, and the terrain, there will not be any negative impacts on views and vistas. The impact on traffic flow and safety has been mitigated by the design of the roadway. Septic systems will meet Title V regulations. Adequate drainage will be provided on the plans. Utilities will be provided and maintained. And the development will not negatively impact the adequacy of affordable housing in the town. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion. One technical change on uh, your last paragraph, uh, third sentence from the bottom. It says, it have been mitigated by the design of the roadway. <clears throat> there is no roadway. I apologize for that. It should be by the design of the driveways. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so we need, uh, well, let's see. I guess we don't need a motion for that. If the motion make, we'll accept that. Yeah. Uh, so we'll yes, accept, accept okay. that change. Okay. Yeah. Is there any other discussion? 
All right, I have one uh, thing that I'd like the board just to consider, and um, and, in, and that is in this last paragraph, which is under special permits, whereas the, the previous was, was under uh, the previous uh, information that's listed here is under the um, article for planned residential development. And that is, and, and this may be redundant, but after that word driveway, I said, I, I'm, I'm wondering whether we need to address the fact that that safety, safety has been enhanced and mitigated by the requirement for vehicles to exit the lots in a forward direction. Now we've said it before in the planned residential development um, portion. Do you think it's necessary to, to say it again under, under the special permit portion? I know it says safety, and, and uh, that's what I said. The oh. impact of the sa and, and safety has been mitigated by the design of the driveway and the requirement for vehicles to exit the lots in a forward direction. That's what oh, I'm I asking. see. Which one? Do you think it's? Well, do you think it's necessary to add that under the special permit portion of this motion? I don't think it's necessary, but it wouldn't hurt. Okay. So, does anybody else feel it's necessary? Okay. Then I'll just. I won't. Uh, I won't ask that as an amendment. Any further discussion? No. No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you, Thank you Mr. McGrath. I now need a motion to return to the original agenda. So moved. Second. Discussion? <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Motion carries. The next item on the agenda is a discussion and possible decision on the development of regional impact discretionary referral of Mammoth Acquisition uh, Company special permit site plan review to construct a retail pharmacy of 14,600 square feet and a bank of 3,000 square feet at 93 and 105 Davis Straits and 238 Worcester Court Fountain. All right, now I need to explain this. Uh, this item. Mr. Chairman. Um, there were. Mr. Chair. I yes. need to recuse myself. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Okay. At our public hearing, we had five people. Um, uh, testify that they thought that the uh, planning board should consider sending the uh, this application to the Cape Cod Commission. Uh, the Cape Cod Commission had already given us information on traffic and uh, and was not um, required, uh, it was not in their jurisdiction <coughs> since the number of square feet of 10,000 was not exceeded. So, um, I had a discussion with uh, Mr. Curry, and um, I said that I thought that the planning board should consider uh, talking about this, and if we wanted to talk about it, then we could consider whether we wanted to uh, refer it uh, as a discretionary referral to the Cape Cod Commission. So what I'm asking you to do now is to discuss and vote on to whether or not you want to consider sending it to the Cape Cod Commission. And if you vote no, then we won't. And if you vote yes, then we will consider it. So that would be a second vote if we would be going, as, going to, uh, to the Cape Cod Commission for a discretionary referral. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, Rich? I see no purpose in doing that other than to delay what is a salutary and indeed necessary improvement to this site. The Cape Cod Commission can bring no more insight into the issues that have been raised here, particularly the issues of neighborhood character, where the Cape Cod Commission does not have anywhere near the understanding of such issues as the members of this board. We may disagree on those issues, but we clearly have much superior uh, information as to the history of this site, knowledge as to what the uh, aesthetic considerations are, and, the, and, the, uh, and what else would the Cape Cod Commission 
bring here. We've already heard them on the important issue of traffic. And so a discretionary review would simply be punching this down the road and would serve no valid purpose. Other comments? Yes, Doug. Uh, it's my understanding that the time when we want to refer a project to back to the Cape Cod Commission is when we feel like we don't have enough information or we are lacking the ability to do the site plan review and <coughs> handle a special permit. I don't think we had any of those kind of issues. We felt mm -hmm. like the project was moving in the right direction. We had a lot of public comment indicating the desire for that, but we didn't have that. Mm -hmm. We didn't feel that need. So that was a, a bit of a surprise to me. Okay. Other comments? Bob? What, what could they do? I mean, what would have, uh, what could the Cape Cod Commission? Uh, well, we, we. I asked. Okay, I yeah. asked, okay, yeah, I, I, I asked I read Brian. Okay. I asked Brian uh, for, uh, you know, what what types of what type of uh, things would they consider and, and the criteria. And yeah. He did print out for us a um, a copy of of some of the uh, bulletins that they have issued, which refer to. Um, uh, DRIs, and I've I picked out I I found five in there that I thought might be of uh, of of uh, that would be appropriate. So um, to the the re the reason I put this up here is because the testimony from people in the public indicated to us that they didn't feel as though we had enough expertise in this area, okay? That was their thinking. That's, that doesn't have to be our thinking, but that's their thinking. Other comments? Mr. Chair. Yeah, I'm sorry, Rich. I'm going to recognize Pat first. I'm basing this on the report that we had in regard to Little Pond Landing and a statement that was made in there because not only did they look the... Um, group doing the review of that did not only looked at Little Pond Landing, but part of their charge was to look at the surrounding area as well, which mm -hmm. they did. And they did mention the CVS property in there. And at that point, it was proposed redevelopment of the area. So they were looking at it before this came before us. The thing that they said at that point was that they recommended that those older buildings be kept, the older historical buildings. However, our groups here in town that would have anything to say about that didn't even whimper, and they usually do very loudly if there was any reason to keep those buildings. Any, um, that they felt that they were either viable. So I would say that was the only thing that I read in that report as to what they might consider a problem with the redevelopment. Certainly the square footage doesn't pose a problem. Jim? I um, just wanted to think the group that was supposed to view that now, is that the design review committee that we don't have any minutes from? No. Well, what, what are you well, the, talking about specifically? The, the antique buildings that are being no, I No, I believe, no. The design review committee would be looking only at the new construction and the new CVS so what, building and the what, and the, uh, what and group the said it's okay to tear down the... That's the historic, mm -hmm. historical commission. So we have, they had no problem? They had no problem. They said okay. fine. So they didn't even have a, um, a waiting period. For there was no. They, they didn't. They didn't impose any demolition delay uh, portion of their uh, jurisdiction. Anything else? Are we taking public comment? Yes. No. Okay, I didn't think so. Um, so uh, this is this is uh, a vote amongst ourselves whether or not you th you want to consider it sending it, and if you don't want to consider it, then you vote no. Chair, yes. I, I move that we not make any discretionary referral to the Cape Cod Commission and that we do proceed to further discussion on the motion that it will be before us and to vote it or to require amendments oh. if appropriate. Okay. Is there a second, second to that? Second. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. The motion carries. We will not discuss a and a uh, 
the possibility of, of referring this as a discretionary referral to the Cape Cod Commission. We will then proceed. Um, the applicant is Mammoth Acquisition LLC site plan review and a special permit to raise the existing buildings comprised of 30,249 square feet and construct a retail pharmacy of 14,600 square feet and a bank of 30, 30 excuse me, 3,000 square feet at 93105 Davis Straits and 238 Worcester Court Falmouth. Now, um, we have up the, the, uh, the uh, staff has drafted a motion for us. Uh, Doug, would you like to read that? Yes. Uh, Second page. Second page. Yeah. Just one second. Technical <coughs> item, Mr. Chairman. There's actually two motions. I'm sorry? There's actually two motions. So make sure you vote the first one first, and then there's a second one. There's a motion for the okay, site plan the, the review. Okay, the, there's a first, first motion is for the site plan review, and the second, and the second motion is for the uh, special permit. Per okay, so D Doug, would you read the first one then? <clears throat> okay. Motion that the planning board vote to approve the application of Mammoth Acquisition <coughs> Company, LLC, under Article 39, site plan review of the zoning bylaw to raise the existing buildings and construct two new buildings, one for retail sales and pharmacy use, 14,600 square feet, and the other for banking use, 3,000 square feet. Located at 93 to 105 Davis Straits and 238 Worcester Court, also shown on Assessor's Map 39, Section 15, Parcel 25, Lots 000A and 000C, and Map 39, Section 15, Parcel 27, Lot 000, as depicted on plans entitled A, Site Plan Prepared for Mammoth Acquisition Company, LLC, prepared by Holmes & McGrath, Incorporated, dated August 27, 2012, revised 3-20-2013, scale 1 inch equals 40 feet, sheets 1 through 7, as supported by a letter from Raul Lazardi Rivera, PE, dated 4-16-2013, and stormwater management report dated August 16, 2012, revised, revised March 2013. Planting plan, uh, B, planting plan, CVS and Cooperative Bank, Davis Straits, <coughs> prepared by Horiuchi and Celine, landscape architects dated 10-1-2012, revised 4-12-2013. Scale one inch equals 20 feet, as supported by a letter from Laura M. Moynihan, Esquire, dated 4-12-2013. B, uh, item C, CBS Pharmacy Exterior Elevations and Notes, prepared by BKA Architects, dated 8-17-2012, revised 4-8-2013, scale 1 8 inch equals 1 foot. New Branch, uh, item D, New Branch Bank Building, Cooperative Bank of Cape Cod, prepared by Brown Lindquist, Fanu Fanuccio, and Raber Architects, Dated 10 4 2012. Scale as noted, sheets A1 uh, .1 A2.2. Finally, the applicant proposes to redevelop the property located at the corner of Davis Strait and Worcester Court from its current 20,499 square feet of single family residential <laughs> office and retail space into 14,600 square feet of retail pharmacy space together with a bank for a total of 19,100 square feet of new construction. This redevelopment requires review by the planning board under Article 39, Site Plan Review of the Zoning Bylaw for design details concerning parking, landscaping, drainage, lighting, utilities, and other aspects of site design. The use of this property as proposed will also require the issuance from the board of, of a special permit under Section 240-51. Point A, 11, A, for new construction of retail sales over 7,000 square feet growth floor area, the board will decide each application accordingly. This project does not implicate Cape Cod Commission jurisdiction based on the above square footage calculation <coughs> as acknowledged in a letter dated 8-2-2012 
from Paul Medzwicki, Executive Director. These applications were received by the Board on January 9, 2013. The Planning Board duly advertised and opened its public hearing on the applications on February 12, 2013. That was continued to March 5th, March 12th, and April 2nd, 2013. The hearing was closed but for written comments from the applicant on architecture and landscaping on April 2nd, 2013. Following the closing of the hearing, the Board has reviewed the plans accompanying the applications and supporting material has taken into consideration in its deliberations, referrals from town departments, public testimony, and correspondence from the Cape Cod Commission staff. The Planning Board conducted an on-site review of the property on February 8, 2013. Under site plan review, the Board finds the plans conform to the dimensional requirements of the zoning bylaw concerning building setbacks and heights and lot coverage ratios. As existing buildings on site are being demolished, therefore nonconformities, if any, have been extinguished. The site is in the Coastal Pond Overlay District for Little Pond. However, the buildings will be utilizing the municipal sewer system, therefore there will be no need for nitrogen mitigation. Except as modified by conditions number one through eight below, the board finds the application satisfies Article 22 parking requirements of the zoning bylaw, including the number and location of off-street parking and loading spaces, aisle widths, and the design of drive-through facilities. Article 23 performance requirements of the zoning bylaw, including nuisances, site design, and stormwater management, and Article 24 landscape requirements. Conditions. You can read it. What like is that. the uh, condition one? No tractor trailer trucks. Oh, I see. No tractor trailer trucks delivery vehicles arriving at or departing the loading area at the south of the CBS building shall be limited to the hours of 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. in order to avoid conflicts with motorists utilizing the drive up window. Is that clear? Uh, no, it's just tractor trailer trucks. Not no. Okay. Oh, I see. Tractor trailer trucks arriving at or departing the loading area. Okay, that's right. Okay. Number one. Number one. Tractor trailer trucks arriving at or departing the loading area at the south of the CVS building shall be limited to the hours of 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. in order to avoid conflicts with motorists utilizing the drive up window. Number two. All pavement markings and signs for traffic control shall be maintained in good condition. Number three, all landscaping shall be maintained in good condition as per the plan cited above. Number four, pedestrian paths through the landscaped area shall be provided with low-level lighting, fixtures attached to bollard style fixtures. Pole lighting for the parking area shall be designed as down lighting or box lighting, so-called, so as not to spill over adjacent property lines. Number five. Parking spaces 29 and 30 shall be designated employee parking only, and parking space 31 shall be eliminated and the adjacent landscaped island extended into its place in order to avoid maneuvering or turning conflicts with vehicles entering the site from data streets. Parking space 31 may be reallocated elsewhere on the site under the supervision of the town planner. Number six. The plan shall be constructed as approved. Any changes shall be reviewed by the planning board to determine if a modification of this decision is necessary. Pursuant to 240-183B of the zoning bylaw, no permit for full or partial occupancy shall be issued until the planning board is satisfied that the conditions of this approval have been met. Number seven, prior to the issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall obtain a curb cut opening permit from the Department of Public Works Engineering Division for the entrance on Worcester Court. All work performed within the public right of way shall be conducted under the direction of the town engineer, except as may be modified by the Massachusetts Department of Transportation. The curb cut on Davis Trades, the applicant shall seek the approval of the department and all work shall be performed under the supervision of the town engineer. Number eight. Prior to the issuance of building permits, the applicant shall submit an approval not required plan for the planning board's endorsement to create lots one and two. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion. Mr. Chairman, <coughs> one little technical change for you. <coughs> I'm in an error here on some numbers so with your indulgence. Um, the first paragraph on your motion where it says, 
the third line down where it says one for retail sales or pharmacy use of 14,600 plus or minus square feet. That number should be 15,300. 15,800? 15,300. 15,300. And if you can make that same change on the first paragraph of findings, <coughs> where it says 14,600, that should say 15,300. Okay. And then on the first paragraph of findings, uh, I'll need to change that 19,100 to 18,300, please. Apologize for that error. Yeah. Okay, yes? Another correction is just a um, grammatical correction. If you look at uh, condition seven, the last sentence, the last sentence should be, except as may be modified by the Massachusetts Department of Transportation for the curve cut on Davis Straits, comma, the applicant shall seek the approval of the department and all rental of the performance of the supervision. That comma should not be there. The word four should be put in its place. To make the okay. sentence read. Make because sentence. that's the curb cut on on the uh, the, Mass, the Massachusetts Highway. Yeah. Right. Okay. Did everybody see that? Yeah, we put that there so you guys can make sure you're reading it. Right. <laughs> Congratulations, you found it. Everybody see what it, what we're talking about here? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Further discussion. Okay, I have a proposed amendment um, that will uh, be number nine, and I'd like to, uh, everybody has a copy of the, of the, uh, of the layout in front of them. Mm -hmm. If you will look at the parking spaces that are parallel to Davis Straits and adjacent to the CBS building, they're all back-to-back -back, uh, parking. As you can see that, can you no. To I'm sorry. Parallel to Davis perpendicular to Davis Straits. The parking spaces are perpendicular to Davis Straits. You said parallel. No, I said that the parking lot parallel to Davis Straits. The, the, um, that's the only place in the entire development where there's back-to-back -back parking, with the exception of uh, three or four up at the top left portion of the proposed CVS pharmacy. I looked at the um, parking um, uh, requirements for, um, that, that are required and um, it, is, it has been my, my personal feeling and through conversations with many people here in this town that the back-to-back -back parking um, in the existing uh, CVS uh, parking lots are, are, are very difficult to navigate. And these are proposed to be the same. So my, uh, my, my proposed amendment is to change the parking angle for those parking spaces to the 60 degrees which uh, the, the aisle width uh, remains the um, the same for two-way traffic, which it, which it is, and the parking stall length remains the same and, you, and, you, and, the, and the curb length is, is increased by one foot. It would probably reduce the amount of parking in that area by probably maybe two spaces. Um, the Cape Cod Commission indicated that there is many more spe uh, parking spaces proposed than are required. So if, if everybody understands what I'm saying, I'm going to go up to the board and make sure that you understand what my proposed amendment is. It would be these parking spaces here. These would be on an angle this way, so that when you're coming up this way, you would go in that way and back out that way. These would be angled the opposite direction and would also help in um, alleviating some of the, uh, any light that might carry over to Davis Straits, even though there's proposed uh, landscaping there to prevent that. So that's, that's what I'm proposing, and I'll read you what I have.
I'm proposing that uh, condition number nine read parking spaces parallel to the Davis Straits run, running uh, the length of the CVS building shall be 60 degrees on both sides for two-way traffic. Now, it will also uh, possibly impact uh, condition number five because employee parking, I believe, was going to be in that area, wasn't it, uh, Pat? Right. So that that may uh, that may have to change slightly um, because I don't know the, the spaces are not numbered on the plans that I have, so I don't I don't know space 31 and 29 and 30. I, I don't know where they are. Anyway, so I am my um, I move uh, to amend the conditions to add number nine to read parking spaces parallel to Davis Straits running the length of the CVS building shall be 60 degrees on both sides for two-way traffic. I'll second that. Discussion. Um, uh, Jim? Just, just a question. Um, how does that impact when a car comes in and all the parking spaces to the right are filled? and there's some vacant ones on the left, they can't get in. They have to continue driving around the parking lot. Do you think that'll create more driving around and not enough parking? Do you see what my question is? I do. I, I do. I do. I understand. Just a question. I understand what you're saying. I don't, I, I, excuse me, Rich. I'm trying to speak to Jim, please. That's all. Uh, I'm okay. just questioning. I, I don't have I, an opinion. I, I, I just was asking. I, 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 that's, probably, that's probably the case. They could go, they can go <clears> continue <throat> through there. Make a U-turn, come back <coughs> around, and okay. park in the opposite direction. Mr. Chair? Yes? A, I'm sorry, but this is a rare instance, which I agree with Jim. And uh, the other thing that occurs to me is if you do that, and that means the only people, as a practical matter, that are going to be using these spaces are the people who come in from Worcester Court, because that they will be coming from that direction. But they will have to exit onto Davis Straits. As purely as it, apart from what Jim's valid concern about excess driving around a lot, which is not advisable, we're also then requiring people who otherwise would not choose to go on to Davis Straits to go on to Davis Straits, which is by far the, the, the worst issue in, in terms of overall traffic around the site. So I, th I think by leaving it the way it is, I don't know if we could maybe widen the area a little bit. That might help your concern. But I, I so think trying to, you know, micromanage the traffic, uh, you know, flows on here. I think you might be creating more problems than you're solving. Because the only real problem that, that exists here is the fact that, well, you have to back up. You have to be careful and look where you're backing. But we should be doing that anyway. So. Other comments? Jim? Um, not sure the plan doesn't show it, but I thought I remembered from other presentations that there was uh, um, no left turn at that Davis Straits. Is you that can't, the case? That's true. You can't turn. So, it. so these cars are going to have to drive around the parking lot again. So both ways, we're going to be doing this. What are you saying? Well, the, car, the cars that come in this way and they park here. Yeah. They got to back out this way, come here. They can't leave that way. So now, they, yes, they can. They make a right. Oh, they can only go right. Okay. Good. Guess that's and true. anybody, anybody, anybody leaving, so they're forced to go right. right that way. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, Pat. Although I would like to see, because of the size of today's vehicles, a couple of extra feet there between the two rows. I think it's not appropriate at the time of a decision to start making what I would consider a fairly major change in this plan because of the density of use here. And because of the requirements for setbacks, I think it would be very difficult to make any change. And therefore, I would be opposed to making a change tonight when we're trying to make a decision. Doug? Uh, that was my concern, too. It's, it's at the last minute, and we might stick them with something that's hard to deal with. And they don't have a chance to professionally respond. Unless we no. table this again. No, we're not going to do that. Right. OK, any um, other? Bob? No, uh, nothing that I could add to that. Okay. So I have a motion. Any further discussion? So there's a motion and a second on the floor. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Aye. Motion is defeated. Okay. 
Is any further discussion on the motion for <coughs> the uh, site plan review, which uh, Doug read? Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Aye. I oppose. You're opposed. Yeah. Uh, all right, I'm going to ask for a raise of hand. All those in favor? Opposed? Abstain. The motion carries. That is, uh, that portion of the vote is only a simple majority. The next portion, the next motion will require two thirds, which will require uh, five of us to vote in the affirmative or the negative. And Mr. Chairman, <coughs> on the motion, you should change that number from 14,600. This is at the bottom of page two. Yep. That number should be 15,300. <coughs> Mm hmm Is there another is there another one? No, sir. Okay. 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 Um, Pat, would you be willing to read the motion sure. for uh, the special permit? Mm -hmm. I move that the planning board approve <coughs> the application of Mammoth Acquisition Company and grant a special permit pursuant to section two forty dash fifty one A eleven A of the zoning bylaw in order to raise the existing buildings and construct two new buildings, one for retail sales and pharmacy use, 15,300 plus or minus square feet, and the other for banking use, 3,000 3, plus or minus square feet, located at 93 to 105 Davis Straits and 238 Worcester Court, also shown on Assessor's Map 39, Section 15, Parcel 25, Lots 000A and 000C, and Map 39, Section 15, Parcel 27, Lot 000E. Findings. A special permit granting authority shall grant a special permit only upon its written determination that the proposed use will not have adverse effects which overbalance its beneficial effects on either the neighborhood or the town in view of the particular characteristics of the site. The determination shall indicate and shall include consideration of each of the following. A, adequacy of the site in terms of size for the proposed use. The planning board finds the size of the site adequate. The minimum lot size in a business two zoning district is 40,000 square feet. Proposed lot one is 92,146 and proposed lot two is 43,301 square feet. Lot coverage by retail buildings is allowed up to 40% of the lot. The proposed CVS lot one is at 19% lot coverage. Banks are allowed up to 12% lot coverage. The proposed bank lot two is at 9% lot coverage. Total lot coverage is allowed up to 70%, which is proposed for lot one and 61% for lot two. B, suitability of the site for the proposed use. The planning board finds the, the site suitable for the proposed uses. The zoning is business two, which allows retail sales and services both by right and special permit. The surrounding land uses are primarily retail sales and services, including a bank and supermarket. The ways serving the site are part of the state highway system or principal roadways of the town. The intersection is signalized and is proposed for new advanced traffic control equipment as part of an upgrade proposed by the state. Plans for the site have been integrated into this intersection upgrade. C, impact on traffic flow and safety. The board finds the impact on traffic flow and safety to be acceptable. Currently, there are six access driveways to the project site. The proposal calls for the elimination of three curb cuts and the relocation of the Davis Straits curb cut to the south, the introduction of a new Worcester Court curb cut to the east, and the retention of the existing Worcester Court curb cut to the north. The traffic impact and access study provided by the applicant indicate the project will not have a significant increase in motorist delays or vehicle queuing both on and off the site. The board is aware that during summer months, the volume of traffic in this area results in significant left turn movement delays all along Davis Straits and T-Ticket Highway. However, these delays can be expected under no build, future, and build conditions. With the elimination of curb cuts and the upgrading of the intersection and the overall reduction in floor space, the board finds no net increase in traffic-related impacts over existing conditions. 
D, impact on neighborhood visual character, including views and vistas. The planning board finds no impact on neighborhood visual character, including views and vistas. The buildings and landscaping proposed by the applicant will be an improvement over what currently exists today on the site. There are no significant views or vistas being affected by the height or location of the buildings. The board finds the proposed conditions to be superior over what currently exists on other nearby parcels with retail uses. E. Adequacy of method of sewage disposal, source of water, and drainage. The board finds the methods of sewage disposal, source of water, both potable and for fire suppression, and the drainage, in parens, stormwater management, for the project to be adequate. The plans call for new fire hydrants to be located on site in Davis Straits, as per the referral from the Thalma Fire and Rescue Department. The site will utilize the municipal sewer system. The Department of Public Works maintains town water in the area. F. Adequacy of utilities and other public services. The board finds these to be adequate. The site is served by power and telephone utilities and is adjacent to other public services, including cable and internet connections. G. The effect of the proposed project on the adequacy of the supply of affordable housing in the town. The planning board finds no effect on the supply of affordable housing in the town. H. The decision of the planning board under Article 39, Site Plan Review. <coughs> the decision of the planning board under Article 39, Site Plan Review, dated May 7, 2013, will be incorporated and made part of this decision in its entirety, including but not limited to the plans cited and conditions imposed. I, compliance with all applicable sections of the zoning bylaws, including but not limited to all performance requirements under Articles 22 to 24. The Planning Board finds compliance with the applicable sections in parens 24-51A11A of the Zoning Bylaw and with the incorporation of the Planning Board's decision under Article 39, Site Plan Review, all performance requirements under Articles 22 to 24. Therefore, given the above, the planning board finds the proposed use will be in harmony with the general purpose and intent of this chapter, and that the proposed use will not have adverse effects which overbalance its beneficial effects on either the neighborhood or the town. Conditions. One, the decision of the planning board under Article 39, Site Plan Review, dated May 7, 2013, for Mammoth Acquisition Company, as a letter to Building Commissioner and attached hereto, is hereby adopted and made part of this decision in its entirety, including but not limited to plans cited for approval and conditions 1 through 8 in the photos therein. 2. Pursuant to section 240-221 of the zoning bylaw, the special permit shall lapse two years from the date it is granted if a substantial use thereof has not sooner commenced except for good cause. 3. Pursuant to section 240-217 of the zoning bylaw, a performance guarantee in a form suitable to the planning board shall be submitted prior to the issuance of building permits. One technical change for the board, Mr. Chairman, my apologies. <clears throat> On page four, the decision of the planning board under site plan review should now be dated May the 14th. Right. Today. Which is today. And it, that's, that's, that's noted twice, okay. Brian. And um, under condition number one, it should not be dated. Condition number one and where where is it? Where was the other one? I saw that one. Oh yeah, the other one is oh yeah, May 14th, right? Okay. Right. Everybody got that? That in other words, it's changed to today's date. Yeah. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion. <clears throat> discussion at all hearing none uh, all those in favor aye. 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 opposed opposed, opposed. abstain all right we have two opposing so the motion does not carry all right um, 
Chair? That being the case, the this, this special permit is, is not approved. I assume then that the applicant will uh, take that decision and uh, act accordingly. Mr. Curry. The, board, the board's options are, is there another motion? Or is there an amendment Mr. to Chair? this motion? Uh -huh. Okay. Does it, all right. no, well, sorry, okay. I, this is not unusual. This is not usual. Yeah. Um, what happens? Um, is there another motion? So, so, so that we could motion. entertain another motion. Yes, okay. Rich. Uh, well, I move that those who have opposed this motion articulate their specific reasons uh, under the with reference to the language in this motion as, as applied to the pertinent bylaw provisions. But they articulate those both in fairness to the applicant and in fairness to the council who will have to defend this motion should the applicant take an appeal to the Superior Court. Okay, so you put placing a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Okay. Both the dissenters state with specificity. Uh, Rich, I think we understood okay. your motion. Right. You don't have to repeat it. Do I have a second to that motion? You second it. Discussion. I think Rich has indicated his his okay. So this would be a simple majority uh, to uh, for to require the people who dissented to just to, to, to state their indication. Yes. Let me make sure the board understands so they can't be compelled to state their, their reasons. They have voted that motion. Right. The motion is now gone. That's right. the vote of the board. Now, if you're wanting to have some sort of discussion as to the <coughs> particulars of why they voted, that's not on your agenda and is not properly in front of them. Okay, I, I would think that under this situation, even this the vote did pass, that they could just decline. Yes, oh, that's understood. They, they, they could simply decline to, 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 to comment on their decision. So, um, Let me be clear. Uh, I understand that we cannot compel them to. Good. But if they have good reasons, they should want to explain those good reasons. And if they don't, then uh, I think the denial of this based upon those two uh, becomes therefore arbitrary and capricious if they cannot uh, articulate. Well, I, Rich, I think you're making so, some assumptions here. And, well, and they're, entitled, they're entitled to their own, their, <laughs> their opinion, uh, regardless of what your opinion is of theirs. Yes. So um, is there any other Mr. discussion? Mr. Chairman, I feel intimidated by... Uh, Rich's comments. It's very, very difficult to sit here and listen to him like that. I think it's out of order. Well, I think it's out of order to deny something without having a reason. Well, no, wait, no, wait, no. That that isn't out of order, Rich, mm -hmm. and 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 I can understand. I, I think we do not want to get into personal uh, issues here. So I, I'm just uh, just Rich. Would you please let me conduct the meeting? Thank you very much. Um, we have a motion and a second, and we're asking for discussion on it. Is there any discussion on it? Yes, Doug? In light of information from Mr. Curry, I think I should rescind my second on that because I don't think it's appropriate. Okay. Is there, is there anybody else willing to second that motion? I withdraw the motion. Ex okay. That, Mo that, motion is withdrawn. Okay. No, All right. No, no, wait, wait, Rich. I haven't recognized you, okay? Now. Is there anybody else that wants to propose a, a different uh, motion for this particular application, this special permit? Let's look to that end of the bench. No, I'm, I did look at the, the end of the bench. I'm looking both ways. I just want to be clear. I've had the same objection said at every meeting and brought up every time. It's a matter of record, Rich, okay? Yeah. That's it. Okay. So it's been stated five times. And what is it? I've already said it. <clears throat> All right. Um, is there any? Yeah. Is there any other? We have a, a, an option to have another motion, and, and is there any? Is there any point of any further discussion on this motion? Well, yes, Bob. To, to make a motion, I, I couldn't make a motion to propose what my objections are, because mm -hmm. yes. I have made my comments on several of these hearings mm -hmm. and nothing ad address those comments. Okay. And those were my objections then and they're my objections now. Okay. All right. So those, those are on the record and they're in the minutes. So is there any other comments? If not, I think uh, 
we will I will uh, move on to the next to the next item of, 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 for, the, for the for the Yes, yes, please, yes, if you take the... I think I'd like to ask that the plan... Well, please identify yourself Excuse first. me, Laura Moynihan, attorney for the applicant. I'd like to ask that the um, question be poised to town council as to the required quorum and number of votes for the motion to carry or fail under the statute. And that would come back... Uh, Within a week, we'd have that. Um, I think there may be a quorum issue with the number of required votes. Okay, well, if you choose to take it to the town council, it's certainly your purview. Well, it would be <coughs> sending the motion that's been made and tabling it another week until that information can be put into the record as to the number of required votes given the uh, quorum. A special permit requires five votes, uh, uh, two thirds, and five five of seven is two thirds, and that's and that's that's always been my understanding. Do you have uh, a I, different understanding of that, Mr. I, Curry? I don't have a different understanding. Uh, it's instructions from Attorney Duffy. I'll check again with him in, in respect to the attorney's Moynihan's request. Uh, you have two weeks to file your decision. I'll call him tomorrow, get his opinion. If, if there's a, an issue, I will alert the chairman. Okay. All right. Does that satisfy you then? Uh, he will, he, uh, Mr. Curry will uh, query uh, Mr. Duffy tomorrow. And if there's a, uh, if there's a question about the uh, two thirds, then uh, you will notify me. I will notify you. Okay. The other question I have is if, if Mr. Fox <coughs> is willing to make a motion for additional design conditions. Um, to the plan that could be added as conditions to this approval um, so that he um, may be inclined or Mr. Leary um, you can certainly um, reconsider your vote and amend the uh, motion that's before you to impose at this point um, obviously the applicant uh, would be willing to work with you to whatever degree you require Mr. Fox or Mr. Leary I, I think reasonably speaking uh, given the extent of the work and cost that's gone into this project. Well, you certainly are, are <clears throat> entitled to ask them to do that, but we can't compel them to do that. And if they choose to do that, then they, they can do that. And if they don't want to, then they, they, then they won't. I think, I, think got, I think the board needs to move on. I, I, I agree. So um, with that taking uh, that, with that decision, um, we will continue with the uh, the uh, agenda, and since I can't have misplaced mine, I will use one of these. I've got this. this I've got one thing. Okay. Um, the next item on the agenda is. The local comprehensive plan land use element. Pat. Okay. Um, I think I mentioned that we are looking at potential sea level rise do predicted job. in the future and what this might mean moving forward. And we, um, Jim and Bob and I, are planning to meet um, uh, with Marlene at the DPW offices tomorrow and to have a discussion, I think, would be the best way to say that, as to what they may be planning for the future that has anything to do with infrastructure construction, that sort of thing. So that's the next step we're going forward with now. Okay. Any, any comments or questions for uh, Pat or for any of the members on the uh, Low Comprehensive Plan subcommittee? All right. By thanks. the way, I should mention, too, that I'm just bringing <coughs> this up, and if you remember, we asked you to think about what you think of as land use, and I took down this whole list of things from last time, and you're pretty much on the same page that we're on, and we're looking for, I'd asked you to continue to think about what your definition of what land use is, and we'll keep beating you around the head with that until we come up with a, a total 
comprehensive definition of it. Okay. Sorry, Paul, we forgot to ask you to come back. <laughs> Pat, just, Pat, just, uh, Pat just had a comment about, uh, would you repeat that, Pat, for Paul's? Sure. We're meeting uh, with the D at the DPW offices tomorrow to have a discussion uh, about what they might be thinking in relationship um, to potential sea level rise and what that means in, as far as their planning goes with um, infrastructure, repair, development, and so on. And the other thing is that um, we had asked you last week as a board, because this is our prime responsibility, land use, to think of what you definitively mean of, uh, as far as what land use means to you. And you came up with a whole bunch of um, a list of things and we pretty much have covered all of that in our discussions. But we're going to continue to ask you to think in, in depth about that as we <coughs> report to you our discussions and we'll be looking to you for further uh, definition and help in, in planning this since we're the most responsible agency as far as land use goes. Is this meeting okay. a subgroup only? Well, yeah, if we have group. more than three, it's becomes a planning board, yeah. so, so we can't right, invite you. I was going to invite you all to come, but we can't do yeah. it. Yeah, we can't. Well, I so. just want to clarify that. Yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. You. yeah. I'm sorry, I did clarify it for when you, you were here. here. That is Jim, Bob, and I. I was listening. <laughs> okay, um, next item on the agenda is new business. Anybody have anything for new business? I had one item last week, uh, last week, which I mentioned that I want to go on forward, and that was uh, our voting. Uh, a, a reorganization, a discussion of our reorganization. Scheduled for June the 4th. Right. Okay. Correspondence. There will be no meeting. Uh, Are we meeting next, next week? week? it's the election. Right. Uh, yeah. And more than likely not a meeting on the 28th. Your next meeting will more likely be on June the 4th. Okay. All right. Any Anybody for, uh, did you have something for new business, uh, Paul? I was going to suggest that we consider this uh, landscape inventory that uh, is being developed for the town of Falmouth and appears to have some implications on the planning board. Um, I don't know. I very, know very little about it, and I don't want to get into it right now, but I think the planning board probably should discuss that. Uh, it's my understanding on Thursday of this week that a presentation will be made on the heritage landscape uh, survey to date, and it's probably appropriate that this board talk about those those things. Uh, I came upon it quite inadvertently, and it sounds like it's trying to dictate some planning for the future. So the planning board should be involved in this activity. Is that is that the one that's being done by the graduate students and? Is that well, it's being done by Eric Dre, who's a consultant to CPC and the town on certain things, as you know. Yeah. And the graduate students are doing it. Right. But it has town involvement. Right. And apparently there was a meeting on the 26th of February where 20 or some odd people designated certain areas, and they had 161 areas, which they reduced to 22. And they're trying to develop a landscape survey for those areas. So. Uh, the meeting is going to, on Thursday, is going to present the results to date. And uh, it's the first I've heard of it, so I don't mm -hmm. know how widespread that is. Okay, we can, <clears throat> we can have a, maybe give you a presentation. It's part of the Cultural Resources Inventory. The Historical Commission is working with the Cape Cod Commission is to train some graduate students. That's fine. <clears throat> Paul, I'll see if they'd like to come and brief the board. Good idea. I, I, I did hear about it before, and I actually called uh, Heidi Waltz, who's the chairman of the Historical Commission, and said that I thought the uh, fairgrounds should be included in their inventory. And so, well, I, so I was aware of it. But I mean, I, I don't know to what degree it, ha it, it, it uh, has any implications for us, but we'll find out. I, I think we should discuss it. Good. And I don't believe it's official town-sponsored item, but people from the town like Heidi Walsh and uh, Jessica Wittenauer are, are involved and listed as collaborators. Mm -hmm. But I think it's just an, on an individual basis. Perhaps, uh, Brian, you know more about it. I'm on, I know a little bit about it, Paul, but I think if it's something the board's interested in and wants to talk about, I'll ask, uh, 
ID and <coughs> when, the, when the results are coming in, how they propose to use them and how it, I know the Historical Commission wants to be more integrated into the town's planning. The comprehensive plan is hopefully, <coughs> either the, oh, maybe the local comprehensive plan subcommittee can uh, tackle that and bring it back to the full board. Okay. Yeah. That sounds like a good idea. It's probably not appropriate to talk about it now because no, it's not no. on the agenda, but I would but request put it, it put on the agenda. That's, that's what new business is I intend about. to attend the meeting on Thursday. And uh, Eric was kind enough to give me some advance information, which I've been reviewing while I was outside. He was here tonight, is that what you're saying? No, I had some information provided by him that I was looking at while I was Oh, while you were, oh, yeah, here. right, okay. All right, um, next item on the, any other new business? Uh, correspondence, I didn't see a course, I didn't have a correspondence folder. None, so there is none. So then I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. Second? Second. Somebody? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Meeting is adjourned.